Several large renewable project developers in India are now aiding to the growth of India's energy transition by adding solar power or renewable power at large in gigawatt scale. One of the companies that we recently track is Blue Pine Energy. Blue Pine Energy, for all of those who do not know, has around 700 megawatt plus of operational capacities of renewable energy and has plans to add around 4 gigawatt of total renewable power in the coming days. In our latest episode, we are going to interact with Mr. Rahul Mishra, who is the Vice President of Blue Pine Energy and looks after the CNI segment for Blue Pine Energy. Welcome to Saur Energy International. This is Manish Kumar and you are watching The Conversations with Saur Energy. Twenty twenty one November is when Blue Pine officially started. Uh, I came on board in twenty two. That's when we started CNI. Since then, we are at about four hundred megawatts of CNI projects secured uh, in the states of Karnataka, Maharashtra, and Chhattisgarh. These are capacities either in late stage development or now in construction. Uh, and most of these we've tied up PPAs. Uh, so that's where we stand today, uh, four hundred megawatts and. Going forward, uh, in next one, one and a half years, we'll add another 400 megawatts in terms of development. Uh, and our overall target was to do around 800 to 1000 megawatts of capacity in the CNI space. Uh, on, on overall Blue Pine, we are 700 megawatt plus operational now uh, in terms of operating assets, which were acquired assets, all solar. Uh, and we have close to 2.4 gigawatts of under construction. So. We are well on our plan or the target of 4 gigawatts of capacity within Blue Pine, of which 800 to 1000 megawatt will be CNI and the rest will be utility projects. No, so the operating assets are in 13 states. Okay. Uh, but oh, we are present in 13 states, I would say. But uh, the fresh development that we've done, uh, both on utility side and CNI, are concentrated in some states because of the way the bids have happened. So in CNI, we are in Karnataka, uh, which is a heavily industrialized state and makes sense. We are in Maharashtra, again, a CNI favored uh, location and we are in Chhattisgarh. So these are the three states where we have capacities and we should be getting into Tamil Nadu and couple of other states shortly. On the utility side, other than operating assets, we have a big chunk in Gujarat uh, because a lot of bids happen in Gujarat, both on the solar side as well as on the uh, wind side and Gujarat as a off taker is amongst the top rated off taker. So it's a favored destination that way. So it's a strategic decision to be in Gujarat with close to 600 megawatts of capacity that we are building there. Apart from that on utility, uh, there are two parts. One is the ISTS and uh, we have connectivities and projects in Rajasthan and Karnataka. Again, because of solar radiations being better in Rajasthan with multiple substations coming on the PGCL network and south down south is when, where a lot of wind will happen, right? So logically Karnataka becomes a favored destination that way. That is why our ISTS are spread across these two places. So see process industries are the, are the Food easy process. targets. So no process, I would say cement, steel, any large manufacturing setup auto, textile, all of these guys are large consumers of power and uh, they become the likely or logical choice. In Karnataka, right now we have cement, steel, the larger consumer base and uh, then we have smaller consumers uh, who, who are kind of spread across pharma, R&D on the pharma side, you know, and many others, auto, small auto companies in Karnataka. Chhattisgarh is more steel, uh, heavily steel dominated uh, belt where you have almost because of mines and everything present there. So most of the steel players are there and some cement players are there uh, in, in Chhattisgarh. Maharashtra again, uh, you know, is mix of data centers because of a lot of focus in Maharashtra on data centers, especially even by the government. So one, they are large consumers uh, because of the nature of business uh, of 
clients in data center sitting there is huge amount of data being processed whether it's for banking or any other industry the amount of data which is going on on these data centers is huge so someone like an amazon or someone like a facebook or even intel or any financial services company all of them need to set up their data centers now these are all under third party uh, setups right so there are multiple players who are coming up whether indian or foreign who are setting up large data centers these are nothing but real estate buildings right okay. these are huge buildings which are going to house floors of computers uh, and and nothing else right storing data so one they have large power demand and it becomes a straightforward choice for you to go uh, and tap them uh, second the cost of power is critical because the key cost of their operation is power right so they need a lower cost of power and renewable today at least gives them that option third all their clients are either multinationals so who have already given commitments like amazon or facebook or intel or any of these big guys they all have commitments to go green completely so they their requirement is to set up themselves in data centers which are procuring green power so for data center it kind of becomes a marketing tool also that they are buying green power and all that works well for us uh, as power supplier for data centers because they need renewable power so if you look at historically only the industrialized states have formalized open access uh, for various reasons uh, now at least some of the states have come up with their policies which is a good initiative at least uh, because of centers directive the policies are are in place implementation of this policy becomes key uh, while it's come it will take maybe 6 months 1 year or longer for each of the government departments to come together and implement this you know there is a policy at the end uh, approvals have to happen open access approvals are critical how the settlement of power will happen how the wheeling and banking will happen that sometimes take time and there is always a bit of reluctance especially by discoms uh, because of a clear uh, competition coming in with higher higher paid consumers so it takes time also it's a new set of uh, processes to be taken up so generally my view is once the policies are there and government is supportive of implementing the policy it takes about year year and a half for things to come to ground so right now you have rajasthan which has come up with policy you have andhra again come up with policy orissa has come up with policy with some limitations on how banking will happen uh, other new states like haryana had a policy again has come up with a policy which had challenges when the previous policy uh, they they were not too keen on how the open access will operate uh, and not sure how it will happen this time but at least one by one states are coming with policies Uh, which is a good sign see so the way we are structured uh, we have created a separate business uh, of cni uh, it's it's not like we also do cni we do cni there is a capability within the team which has enough experience over the last 7 8 years uh, and cni as such has only happened in the last 7 8 years right so we have a dedicated team only handling cni from a regulatory aspect from development aspect it becomes very uh, critical as to what kind of team is managing this in any platform it's not about us uh, even other players and that's why if there is a specialized cni platform you know it's been created for that but if it's in a company like ours where we do both utility and cni it's very important to create a team top down to bottom uh who is very cni focused uh, because construction periods are shorter uh development cycle is very different policy interventions is very on the go uh, so you really need to understand as to which state what works and in india every state is a country uh, from a policy standpoint at least so unless you understand all of that and your team understands all that it's very difficult to even get the customers on board so from a scale perspective we have four states uh, where the largest amount of installed cni capacity is karnataka tamil nadu maharashtra and then gujarat uh, effectively from policy standpoint all of these states currently have policies uh, but all of these states are mature have maturity of seeing through the 
the cycle of cni gone through all the bad and good right? experience yeah. in terms of settlement in terms of banking in terms of excess energy coming into the system which they have to handle so now they have understood and uh, all the departments across multiple offices whether it's discom whether it's transco whether it's the commission whether it's you know any other arm they know how everything has to work now the new states have come up with policy but all of this learning curve has to happen uh, which in a way is okay because sometimes you get better policies in place uh, so you get benefit of that but then you are exposed to some delays uh, while in states like the mature states you have little cumbersome uh, policies like gujarat has a flat banking charge right somewhere else if the banking is annual uh, for example let's say in some state now in the new guideline everybody is giving a monthly banking so slowly it's getting standardized but mature states things are faster chances of delay is less uh, so that that's the kind of difference you'll have so orissa came up with a policy uh, and as i said once the policy is in place the question around banking starts coming in right so they came with the policy and they had some restriction in terms of capacity that will avail banking and after that there is no banking facility and for last 6 8 months all that discussion is going on second issue which is a not a policy issue is land issue in in uh, orissa there is there are lot of issues in terms of how you acquire land there are a lot of tribal lands there are a lot of forest land so it's very challenging to get land in that state and at least some of the ipps i know have been struggling on that front and while you have scale right you have all the steel plants there uh, and all of them have obligations and the big steel plants are there so that's why you will see a lot of pro- companies in uh, orissa have signed ists uh, tata steel or some of the other companies have signed for ists now that's a different uh, cni segment altogether which we'll also be doing because it's a real time sale of power uh similarly uh, state of andhra pradesh for last 7 8 years couldn't do anything at government level uh, for various political uh, reasons so there again lot of the companies in andhra were exploring options of doing open access through ists uh up has a policy in place but a litigation going on banking in terms of interpretation whether the banking is 100% or is it 25% and despite litigations at aptel and uprc's level it's still not resolved secondly again the state has small land holdings so if you are taking land in a state like up uh, you are looking at half acre 0.25 acre of land holding so it becomes a nightmare to acquire land right in in a state like maharashtra or karnataka you will have average land holding of 4 5 acres or even more we are technology agnostic uh, depending on which state we are doing uh, are we doing ists are we doing within the state that decides or drives our decision uh, all the intra state sale which is within the state sale mostly uh, solar works because one it's a shorter construction and development cycle compared to wind wind is generally a 18 24 month cycle uh, whereas solar you can you know at least do it in 12 months uh, in in some of the cases secondly if there is banking uh, my cost of solar to cost of wind is very different on a per megawatt basis so it becomes a, a economic decision both on the off taker side as well as on the uh, generator side and and uh, that's why solar you will see more prominent on the cni side however in a state like gujarat the policy drove hybrid uh, because of captive requirements being catered only through the uh, uh, hybrid project under the policy similarly tamil nadu is a is a rich state for both wind and solar and banking is not permitted let's say in the peak hours which is what most of the states do you cannot settle non peak hours in the peak hours which is evening and morning hours so wind generates a lot in the peak hours uh, it starts in the evening post sunset and you have wind power through the night in the wind season and and uh, in the morning peak hours also so slowly people are it's a function of my tariff uh, cost which state i am in what is the policy uh, which kind of drives for us we are absolutely agnostic 
current projects are all solar however in some states we may take up both wind and solar together see i would say uh, it's a very opportunistic business uh, and and when i say opportunistic it's driven by the policy of the state right so center has very clearly uh, given a directive that open access should be allowed and it's been there forever uh, in electricity act 2003 see, open access was given but the prominence of that you see now uh, which is because of many folds uh, one of the reason is government initiative at the at the center second the industries are highly aware are committed to carbon footprint reduction uh, net zero commitments have already been done by large corporate houses and the smaller houses are following that uh, because it it adds value on multiple fronts so you know overall i think awareness centers commitment all of this is there the the policy level implementation remains the challenge uh, land in india is getting difficult so these two factors will always be the challenging areas in terms of how states are helping uh, implement these projects and how the land happens so we have a 50 megawatt project uh, ac operating in Chath- uh, under construction in chatisgarh where we have signed the ppa with apl apollo group uh, which was announced and there is some capacity left which will be signing maharashtra we have two projects uh, one is 165 megawatt project we have signed uh, ppa with a large data center there uh, for the entire capacity 150 is signed 15 will be signed shortly this is a unique project it also has storage along with uh, solar then we have another 80 megawatt again in maharashtra which is pure solar open access and 100 megawatts in uh, karnataka again solar uh, selling power to multiple off takers includes dalmia which is announced and there are few ppas that we haven't announced yet we should be announcing so these are all uh, developed projects we are looking at uh, andhra tamil nadu uh, rajasthan and uh, up uh, to expand further then we have connectivity on uh, ists uh, both in rajasthan as well as in karnataka uh, so karnataka is wind and rajasthan is solar there we should be doing ists uh, cni projects which we should which should be around 100 and 100 to 150 megawatts of capacity